In some ways, mineral rights are a whole different animal than real estate, whether you're looking at commercial or residential. Mineral rights are really just their own thing. But one thing they have in common is that location is everything. I'm going to walk you through the Texas Railroad Commission's interactive map. And we're going to look at six different areas. And I want to show you how the value of minerals can really vary depending on where the minerals are located. So let's look at the Railroad Commission's GIS map. OK, so let's start in the heart of the Permian Basin. This is Loving County in Texas, and it is probably the most valuable county right now. There is, there's a lot of opportunity for stacked, long, horizontal fracked wells. And these wells produce a lot of oil and gas in a short amount of time. And so this is where everybody is excited to be. And you have the most drilling opportunities of anywhere in the United States right here. So this is a tract of land. It's an abstract 1071 in Loving County, if you want to look it up. And what we see here are all of these permits for these long horizontal wells. We can tell they're permits because they're not green circles or even red little suns. These are blue circles, which are permits. So let's back out a little bit so you can get a broader perspective of what this area is like. This is really amazing. Look at these wells and we can actually go in here and see some of these producing wells and we can look at some of the offset production. But right now, I just want to look at the permits. So let's go over to identify wells. And this is the area we were looking at. Unfortunately, the blue square went away, but that's okay. We remember where it is. So if you click on one of these, you can look at the drilling permits. And you see that this was permitted in May of 2020. So that will likely be drilled pretty soon. And they have permitted eight wells here. So just imagine, here is a producing well. There's two producing wells here. But these are older conventional wells. So just imagine you're this mineral owner. And you have no idea that there are eight permits. So you're making just a small amount of money. Let's go look, actually. We can go down here and look at the production data and see, oh, actually, it doesn't look like it's making anything. Um, the other one maybe. OK, here we go. So you can see that these older wells basically haven't been producing anything since about 2016. So just a little tiny bit. They're probably producing it just enough to hold the lease. That way, they won't have to go and lease the mineral owners again to drill these wells. And they may be able to drill them without the mineral owners realizing it until they've already been drilled and they started to produce. So let's look at another example now. We will go to Glasscock County. This is also in the Permian, but this, instead of being in the Delaware Basin, it's in the Midland Basin. And we'll get a little bit of perspective out here. So you can see on this particular tract of land, which is A313, there are no horizontal wells. You only have some, it looks like some producing oil wells, and then you see some plugged oil wells here. This one's producing, and a few dry holes. So not that impressive, except that you have all of this horizontal development offset. So you could potentially buy this property for a lot less than you would buy this property next to it. And likely in the future, you will eventually see horizontal development here. So let's actually just for fun, let's go and look at some of the production on one of these horizontal wells. We'll just randomly pick one here and look at the production data. Let's go back a little bit and go to view all. So now we can see 
this has been producing since, well, it doesn't work because my picture's here and I can't move it. We can kind of see it anyway. So it looks like we have some really nice production here on these wells. And you can look at this in greater detail and look at all of the offset wells and get an idea of what the revenue would likely be like once they drill and fully develop this section here. Let's look at another one. This is in Gray County. So this is the Panhandle of Texas. And we don't see any horizontal wells here. And we don't expect to see that because there's no shale in this area. So all you'll see is older wells. In fact, we'll just go out a little bit. We'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what this area looks like. So you see, this is really typical of a conventional oil field where you have just these pockets of oil that have been explored. You'll also see some areas, we'll look at them in a minute, where you have a lot more dry holes. So this one's kind of interesting. If we zoom in, we'll see that this is a mix. You can see that this is on the edge of this oil field here because as you get out from this oil field, you start seeing more dry holes. And this is a plugged gas well. So the red is the gas wells and the green are the oil wells. And you see that there's, so, there's several plugged wells here and there's several that look like they're producing. So let's go and see how much these wells are producing. In Texas, they often report based on the whole lease. So you may be seeing the total amount of production for all of those wells if they're on the same lease. Let's just have a look here. So I always like to look at a few years, get a sense of how it's declining and performing over time. Okay, so these wells, unlike the ones we just looked at that were making tens of thousands of barrels of oil per month, these are only extracting you know, a minimal amount here. And you have to think about this as the amount that they're producing. So this is interesting here because see they're producing a certain amount every month, but this is how much they're selling. So in August of 2019, they sold 176 barrels, but then they had to wait another three months to sell 173 barrels and then the following month, 183. So these checks are probably only coming, it depends how much interest they own, but they're probably only getting checks every few months or just a couple of times a year, if that. They may only be getting a check once a year. All right, so let's go back and we will look at Ward County. So now we're back in the Permian again, but this was a particularly interesting case because we see a whole tract of land here with no oil and gas development at all, which is really unusual for this area. Okay, so look, so there are a lot, there's a lot of development around here. You see older wells and you see also the new horizontal wells. You see permits, you see actually canceled permits here. I'm not sure why those were canceled. We might be able to find out, but there's nothing in this area. So is that because there's some kind of a geological problem or maybe it's because the mineral owner just was holding out and didn't want to sign an oil and gas lease because that, that happens. So I don't know what the story is here, but I bet that this property is extremely valuable. All right, let's move on. So this is also in the panhandle of Texas. It's another one in Gray County. And I wanted to show you this because there is no producing oil and gas well on his property. In fact, there's no dry holes. There's no, there's nothing here. And you can clearly see where the oil fields are and where they have had successful drilling operations. And this is completely out of that area. So I would say that there's just very, very little value in the minerals under this tract of land. Okay, let's look at one more. And this one is in Young County in Texas. This is an older oil and gas area, kind of a bit marginal. There's little pockets of, of conventional oil here and there, and there's no horizontal drilling. Actually, that's not true. There are a few horizontal wells in this area. But what I think is interesting about this one is the number of dry holes that you see. Look how many times they tried to drill for oil and gas and missed. And in this particular tract of land, 
This one is a 520. And here you see mostly dry holes and one plugged oil well. So again, this really doesn't have a lot of value. You could question the value of the one next to it. It looks like they did find some little pockets of, of oil here and have mostly extracted that. So, you know, when you're looking at older fields like this, you do see these little tiny pockets and, and you can discover more, but the opportunity is not really great. And most people are more excited about the, the shell plays. And so that's where a lot of the drilling activity is right now. You really are not going to see a whole lot of permits or new drills in these areas. So I hope this has been helpful to just go through and look on a map and see where different types of minerals are located and what it looks like to see horizontal wells versus conventional vertical wells and how that might impact the value of those minerals.